Yeah, great questions to my mm -hmm. Um, I think we even have time to do a practice. Craig? Yes, yes. With a tarragon, would that be helpful for a severe nausea of pregnancy, hyperemesis, gravidarum? Yeah, yeah. So, how far along is the person? I'm just asking in general. Oh, um, yeah, it, it would probably be good. Um, I, I like to use things that are very gentle for for somebody who's pregnant. And so the nausea is just like morning sickness and things like that, or? Typically it's um, with vomiting and difficult keeping anything down. So pretty okay. severe. Like severe, so you're talking about more severe, severe cases. Yeah. Um, I, I I like the tarragon for that. Um, I probably wouldn't do marjoram. Um, you could probably even use like lemon. Like lemon would be very soft and gentle. Um, lemongrass. Yeah, nice. Even a little rosemary could be okay. I, I would probably go tarragon though. J just because that, you know, one of the things that can throw off that rest and repair, you know, aspect of the nervous system is, you know, pregnancy. Like it's part of what's happening is, you know, everything just gets a little bit rearranged a bit. And so again, you're treating the symptoms, but you're also treating the potential cause. Um, I, I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 you know, this is many, many years ago, but um, I dabbled with using um, bergamot, neroli, and lavender in some of those situations, just keeping the mom like comfortable because they're very safe with the baby. They're very safe with, um, uh, you know, whatever stage that they're at, but yet they can produce a result. And so um, the, the other thing, like it's a little bit different with a pregnancy because The, the body needs a little bit more like fortifying than we we kind of think about when it comes to that. Like, the, you know, the example would be the body's not fortified. They go through, they have the baby, and then afterwards they have postpartum depression. And part of that is probably it was building for like five, six, seven months while they were pregnant. You know, it wasn't like something that just happened. It's like it was depleting to the body. It was the body was out of whack with uh, hormonal fluctuations and things like that. And so those things are a little bit more fortifying. And even the idea of using um, jasmine, it's not necessarily going to be the thing you would use to treat um, like the nausea and the vomiting, but it is very fortifying to the uh, system. And it's what would treat postpartum depression like after the fact so you're almost like kind of reverse engineering it going like okay let's just prevent keep the, the mom as as comfortable and happy as possible um, so you could do tarragon but I'd still mix in a little maybe lavender bergamot neroli and if it looks like she's getting depleted I'd go with a bit of jasmine like on the wrist or behind the ears or something like that Very good. Um, question came up, is the lobelia and hyssop inhaled applied to the skin or ingested for the sternophragal mask? Yeah, hyssop is inhaled. Lobelia is an herb that you would get in capsules. Like get capsules, not a tincture. And you would take one to two capsules. Most people, I would say, just take one capsule twice a day. Um, if you're a bigger guy or something, you could take two or in extreme cases. The issue that happens if you take too much lobelia is it will make you throw up. And so if you if you took lobelia and threw up, you took a little too much. And so um, 
one capsule usually nails it. Like you don't need to go big on that one. Um, I'd, I'd keep it one capsule one to two times a day. So that internal hiss up inhaled. Yeah.